and uh, is yours truly, T.J. Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And um, I got a little time, so I thought that I might go live for a few minutes um, and talk to you all about some Saints news and also try to see if anybody has any questions they want me to answer. Uh, before I get started, um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel of the State of the Saints podcast. Go to YouTube.com, uh, search The State of the Saints podcast. Uh, you know, it's uh, something that I've been doing since uh, the beginning of last season. It's something I'm really uh, proud of. You know, anytime, you know, I, you know, I put something out and, and people, uh, you know, listen to it. It's always extremely humbling. So um, if you are into the New Orleans Saints and you like Saints news and you like to keep up to date on the Saints, just go ahead and um, go to YouTube.com, search The State of the Saints podcast. And right now I'm just waiting for uh, some people to come in, um, see if they have any questions. But in the meantime, um, I posted uh, two new videos talking about Michael Thomas' contract. Uh, we all know, uh, as of right now, um, the making of this video, uh, Michael Thomas still does not have a contract with the New Orleans Saints. Don't know what's taking so long. Seems like this would be a no-brainer. But it seems like to me that uh, they're playing a waiting game. <laughs> That's what it seems like. Uh, it seems like the, uh, the agent of Michael Thomas um, is playing a waiting game. Um, you have people like Amari Cooper of the Dallas Cowboys. He got to get paid. Julio Jones out there in Atlanta. He's looking for a new contract. A.J. Green. So um, I, I think they're just waiting to see who is going to get what. I mean, uh, the media talked to Amari Cooper on yesterday and they asked him about uh, is he waiting for Michael Thomas to get a new contract. And he was like, nah, you know, I'm not waiting. Um, I'm, we're just trying to make sure that we do what's best for me. Come on, man. We all know how this goes. These guys are playing a waiting game, trying to see who the first person to get the big contract so their agent can negotiate an even better contract. But... Um, I made two videos and I was talking about Michael Thomas and the contract and a lot of people, man, I, I, I still don't get it. I still don't get how, uh, I don't get how true Saints fans can have a problem with Michael Thomas getting a big deal. I, I'm just being honest. I, I just don't get it. If you are a true Saints fan, I ain't talking about, uh, you know, 2006 and, 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 you know, going forward. I'm talking about back in the day. I'm talking about when they had some straight up bull shaza coming through the Superdome. Dudes couldn't catch a cold and 40 below zero. Dudes couldn't catch, man, them boys couldn't catch nothing. You get what I'm saying? Like, they was terrible. You look at somebody like um, Andre Hastings. I mean, trash. I mean, man, the Saints had some straight garbage at the wide receiver position. Now, if you were watching the Saints in 2006, you probably got spoiled by Marcus Colston, the, the seventh-round pick who came from Hofstra and just took the league by storm. And you know the crazy thing about it? You know what I found out? You know Marcus Colston never made the Pro Bowl? Ain't that some ish? <laughs> he never made the Pro Bowl. That's crazy. But anyway, you probably got spoiled by Marcus Coaston and, and Lance Moore and guys like that. And, and man, it's just crazy to me. Like, how can you be a true Saints fan and be mad that you finally got a wide receiver that's getting the attention that he deserves? And we all know, even we talk about Marcus Coaston, the fact that he didn't make the Pro Bowl is just absolutely laughable. And now we have a, a wide receiver that the whole league sees and recognizes to be an absolute beast. And now all of a sudden we got a problem? Oh, he, he, he don't need to get $20 million. Man, stop counting people bread, man. If, if you were good at your job, and some I'm pretty sure that you are, if you're good at your job, you won't get paid. You ain't, you ain't trying to negotiate. You're trying to get the highest deal. How is it that we can sit around here and talk about these NFL players and they, they need to take a pay cut and they don't need to make that much money? Says who? Says who? I want to see somebody count your bread and you don't have a problem with it. I want you to be like, 
nah, bro, you know, I'm going to go ahead and take this pay cut, man. I know I've been here for about five, six years. I've been grinding, you know what I'm saying? First one to get here, last one to leave, but get that money to somebody else. Man, get up out of here with that noise. Michael Thomas deserves to get paid. And all these people out here, like, talking about this man don't need to get paid and they need to think about the future. Once again, that is not the problem of Michael Thomas. Do you hear me? That is not the problem of Michael Thomas. This man is trying to get paid. This man's got to take care of his family. That's up to Mickey Loomis and all them people in the front office. So stop tripping about this man getting his bread. And... and appreciate the greatness that that is at the wide receiver position right now and all these people out here i hear um what, what they say they say michael thomas uh doesn't you know deserve 20 million dollars because it's because of drew Brees. i mean you can say that yeah but you gotta think about it how is it that you had players like lance moore you had players like marcus coaston um Man, you had all of these wide receivers, man, who, who that came through. Robert Meacham. You, you get what I'm saying? Like all these dudes that it came through. How is it that Michael Thomas, playing alongside Drew Brees, he, he, he's exceeded all those dudes? And they played with Drew Brees much longer. And the chemistry between them and Drew Brees was much better than it was with uh, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas had to build it up. How come Brandon Cooks didn't do what... Uh, Michael Thomas is doing right now. For all those people saying that anybody can do it. Anybody anybody can do what Michael Thomas is doing as long as Drew Brees throwing the football. Well, how come all those receivers didn't do it? I, I'm waiting. Somebody explain that to me. How is it? I mean, Michael Thomas, this man was barely recruited out of high school. He went to school out in California like nobody even knew who he was. The only thing they knew he was Keyshawn Johnson's nephew. He wasn't the fastest dude at this time. He didn't have the best hands. He wasn't even the best receiver on Ohio State team. The man had to work and grind for every single thing he got. So you look at all these other players that came through the league, all these first-round picks. This man comes through the second round, runs a, a, a slow 40, uh, you know, I guess in, in all regards to what a wide receiver needs to run, a 4-3, four, 4-4, four, four. this man running 4-5, four, 4-6. Four, he coming to the league, taken by stone. This man still catching everything. So how is it that all of these other players that the Saints drafted, Robert Meacham, first-round draft pick, um, Devery Henderson, second-round draft pick, um, Lance Moore coming off free agency, I mean Marcus Coast in seventh round, how come none of these players broke records like Michael Thomas did? I just need y'all to understand that. Like, it's cool, man. I understand, like, we don't want to go back to the dark ages when we was wearing paper bags on our head from Swagmans, man. But at the end of the day, pay the man. Do you hear me? Pay the man. He deserves to get paid. I don't want to hear about, man, we can go out here and we can get this, that, and the third. No. The window for Drew Brees is closing. I just read an article. They, they just ranked the New Orleans Saints the third team in the league whose window is closing. They're ranked number three because everybody in the league understands that Drew Brees is not going to play forever, man. Like, we, we getting spoiled, man. And, and I know it's them 2006 folk, man. I'm sorry. Look, I hate to be picking on people, but some of y'all don't even realize how bad and how dark the ages of the New Orleans Saints organization was. I do. I remember when, man, the Saints was so bad, you can't even watch the Saints on TV. I mean, that, that's the reason, honestly, that's the reason why I got into broadcasting, because of Jim Henderson down in New Orleans. That's the reason why I became a radio personality, because that was the only way I can catch the Saints. I, I, just, I mean, because they, they, their games was blacked out, Man, you can get a honey bun, a cold drink, and two Saints tickets from a gas station during that time. That's how bad it was. So all these 2006 folk, man, you know, uh, post-Katrina and stuff like that, man, y'all spoiled, man, because y'all see Drew Brees throwing for 5,000 yards every year, man. Y'all see that. And y'all like, man, we, we going to be good, man. We straight. We, we, we straight. We got the defense. We good. Man. I understand where you're coming from, but Michael Thomas is a difference maker. You have to understand, like, when Drew Brees retire, if it's Teddy Bridgewater, if he don't pan out, they probably going to have to get a rookie 
They're probably going to have to get a young player. And, and, and we need somebody that is going to make the transition better for anybody that succeeds Drew Brees. And Michael Thomas is that guy. And another thing. Michael Thomas, he ain't that good, man. He ain't worth $20 million. Look, check this out. Please explain to me, last season, who was the number two receiver on the Saints team? I will wait. Don't give me Ted Ginn Jr. because Ted Ginn Jr. came back around week, I don't know, 13, 14 with a knee injury. I mean, they was pulling guys like Keith Kirkwood and Austin Carr off the practice squad. And these guys were not on the same page with Drew Brees. This shows you the greatness of Michael Thomas. Everybody that played against the Saints that was a cornerback or safety knew that Drew Brees only had one target. One. And this man still made first team all pro. Do you know? I mean, honestly, these guys probably was in a film room watching the Saints offense. They're like, okay, we need to zero in on, on Michael Thomas. And this man still was out there balling. That, that's how you know somebody a beast. I mean, even when the game plan is to take the man out of the game, you couldn't take him out of the game. I mean, that's all Drew Brees had. All Drew Brees had was Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram coming out the backfield, you know, on some screens or whatever like that. You probably can run a, a wheel route with Alvin Kamara. And you had Michael Thomas. That's it. And this man still came out there and balled. And people still like... <laughs> <laughs> he don't deserve his money? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, man, that dog ain't gonna hunt, man, for real. I, I be, I, I'm for you and all that kind of stuff about, say, you know, one plan for the future. But, man, this man earned his money. I mean, it's been a while since I've seen a wide receiver earn um, the money that they supposed to, I mean, they need to get. I mean, it's been a while. Like, usually you see people like Odell Beckham and stuff like that. To me, I mean, I know he from New Orleans. He went to Newman High School. All that noise right there. I feel like that one-handed catch got Odell Beckham paid. Because after that, I mean, he wasn't the same. I mean, he'll probably thrill you with a catch or two in the game. You'd be like, oh, boy, that boy Odell caught that. But that one catch on Sunday Night Football against the Cowboys solidified that man and got him paid. But Michael Thomas, man, the lunch pail mentality. I mean, coming, you're like, not the fastest. At the time, not the strongest, but he go out there and he ball out. He, he goes out there and ball out, man. Wasn't no one-hand catch. Wasn't nothing like that. Just throw the man the ball 50-50, he got it. You know what I'm saying? Put this man in a slot. You know what I'm saying? Running them skinny posts, he got it. Get that man on a, on a street number nine route, man, he got it. What else you want? What else you want, man? Look. I know Ram Chat got to get paid one day. Alvin Kamara got to get paid one day. Look, I'm all for that. But, man, pay this man. Okay? And understand that the league salary cap changes each and every year. Understand that, too. So, oh, enough of this stuff, man. Enough of this stuff about Michael Thomas don't need to get paid, man. Y'all, man, that sounds crazy. Like, I, I'm serious, man. Like, I love each and every one of the members of the Who That Nation, but... Man, anybody that's talking about Michael Thomas don't need to get paid this amount of money. He don't need to be paid, you know, as the highest paid wide receiver in the National Football League. Man, I, I don't even want to talk, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just going to stroll past your comments with all due respect. I'm just going to stroll past it. I, I, I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing for you. God bless you. Because, <laughs> man, I've never seen anything like this. This man did everything that was required of him. He checked every box and people still, but I still wouldn't pay him. Like, I'm, I don't get it. But uh, let me see, man. Y'all ask me you know, some questions if you have any um, about the Saints. But that, that's my take on Michael Thomas, man. Uh, let's see. Um, Ryan O'Neal, because you can't guard Mike. That's true. Can't nobody guard him. Man came into the league with a Twitter handle that said, can't guard Mike. Came in the league with some swag and, and lived up to it. Yeah, April, it was some sad times, man. Y man, y'all don't know. Back in the day, early 90s, whoo, boy, it was tough being a Saints fan. Like, for real. It, it was tough being a Saints fan at that time right there, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, y'all think I'm joking. 
Man, you can really go to a gas station and get Saints tickets. Man, you couldn't give out, man, you couldn't give away Saints tickets for free. I'm, I'm serious, man. It'd be like, man, you know, man, I got two tickets. Man, you got two tickets well to the Saints game. Oh, God, I'm good, man. You know, I'm just going to sit at home, you know what I'm saying, and just, you know, look at the wall. That's how bad it was. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had to look at the wall and look at a Saints game. That, that's how bad it was. You know, so anybody, you know, you listen to my podcast and stuff like this, man, this ain't no... This ain't no five-year thing. I'm 32 years old, man. I've been watching the Saints my whole entire life. The ups, the downs, the highs, the lows. Man, I can give you the, the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. And I'm telling you, Lord knows there have been some lows. I'm talking about to the flow low. You know what I'm saying? For real. So when I say who that, I mean that for my soul. You know what I'm saying? Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no new, you know what I'm saying, rebuilding of the Superdome Saints fan over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this is a lot of heartache and pain right here. But I, I love my team, man. Um, Yeah, April here is worth every penny. For real, though. You know, anybody that's saying Michael Thomas ain't, don't, ain't worth his money, sound crazy. Um, Let's see. T. Stokes paid a man. I agree. Carlene, yeah, they should pay him. Hey man, what's going on, Tori? Man, shouts out to LGS, man. West Bank all day, y'all, man. Much love to the West Bank. I'm from the Ninth Ward, man, but you know I still got love for the West Bank. Yeah, man, Ryan. He said I went to those games early in the late '90s. They were awful. Yeah, man. Woo. Hey man, I ain't gonna talk about Aaron Brooks too bad, man. You know I ain't gonna talk about him too bad. He was the first uh, quarterback to uh, win a playoff game for the Saints. And I actually was at that game, man. When they beat the Rams, I, I was at that game. I was I was uh, a part of this uh, high school program. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to actually watch that game from a luxury box, man. Because um, some people from the Saints, you know, let me and a couple more kids from um, the community actually go to the game. So that was a that was unforget for, uh, unforgettable moment, man. Real talk. Um, much love to Aaron Brooks, even though, you know, uh, I, I never understood how the hell you can throw about five interceptions in the game and start smiling, you know, ain't nothing, to, that ain't nothing to smile at, you know, I mean, you, you going up there, you know, throwing the ball and being reckless and smiling. That's the only problem I had with Aaron Brooks, man. Ain't nothing to smile at. This man throw a pick and be like, what the hell you smiling at, man? Go out there and make a play. But I mean... I, I think uh, Aaron Brooks had a lot of uh, potential, man. I just think that um, uh, with Jim Haslett being a coach at the time, a defensive mind and coach, um, the Saints didn't have a good offensive mind to try to work with Aaron Brooks to work on his mechanics. But he had a good arm, man. He had a he had a good arm. He can, man, he can thread that needle, man. But man, threw too many picks. But he he gonna forever be uh, in Saints history, man, because he was the first quarterback to win a playoff game for the Saints. So, uh, Tory, uh, but we repopping for the last 12 years. I almost forgot about those bad days. Not me. Uh-uh. They said in order for you to know where you're going, you got to remember where you've been. <laughs> I remember where I was, man. Look, look for real. Like that, you got to remember those times, man. Like that, that is why like the, the Super Bowl, um, back in 2009 was just so memorable and so precious, man, because, it, I mean, you just remember, like, all of those times, man, just, you know, all those bad times, man, it seemed like they were just snake bit. It, we were like the, we're like the New York Knicks, <laughs> how the New York Knicks are right now, you know what I'm saying, that's how it was, man, and I can only imagine, that's why, like, man, it, it just seemed like it was never going in, so it's like when they won the Super Bowl, it was like, Man, it was just so magical, man. Like, I don't know. Like, man, that was that was just a great time. That whole ride to the Super Bowl, man, they can never take that away. Man, I was actually watching, um, you know, some media people. I was um, riding in the car, and I was looking at, uh, I think it was like Undisputed or something. And I was just looking like, how they hate on Drew Brees, man. Like, how they hating on this man. Like, I think, they, I think it was like during the time when he broke the all-time uh, passing record. And they just made it seem like anybody can do it. Like, I understand. Like, they, they say that he, he 
he uh played in a, a Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers uh world or whatever. Man, I want people to understand this. Drew Brees automatically becomes great because if you think about it, the New England Patriots went to the Super Bowl twice before Tom Brady got there. They're not they lost both times, but they got there. The Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, they're a historical franchise. I mean, the damn Lombardi Trophy is named after the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. You look at the, the Colts. I mean, you had Johnny Unitas. I mean, they were one of the most historical franchises in the National Football League. The Saints were one of the worst teams and the worst franchises in the National Football League. And one man came through back in 2006, man. He, he basically, man, he rewrote the book. And just like uh, Tori was saying, man, he made you forget how bad the Saints was. That's why I feel like you need to uh, get this man his respect. Because anybody can go to a franchise where it's, it's historical. And you look at Ben Roethlisberger, I mean, he he came in. I mean, but you let like Terry Bradshaw. I mean, come on, man. Like, like I said, uh, Aaron Rodgers, you had Brett Favre. I mean, come on, man. Like, look at all these people he had to live up to. I mean, Tom Brady, I mean, people don't talk about it, but Drew Bledsoe was pretty good. Pretty damn good. And Drew Brees, I mean, honestly, who, who can you say? I mean, Archie Manning? I mean, Archie Manning, I don't think he made the playoffs with the Saints, and even though it wasn't his fault. I mean, their offensive line was terrible and the team was terrible. And then you had Bobby Abel, you know, like, I mean, suitable at best. The Saints just had a good defense. But Drew Brees, man, he just changed the whole narrative. So I don't see how anybody can not put this man on the Mount Rushmore quarterbacks. Just, just what he did. Just what he did for our community. Just what he did for the franchise. Like, he he, he turned around the franchise. So I just feel like just because of that. I mean, just because of that. I, I, okay, I'll put it to you like this. LeBron James left Cleveland and went to Miami, right? This man won two um, two championships with the Miami Heat. People were like, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying, but he had help. Now, when he went back to Cleveland and he won that championship, I mean, it, it just basically made everybody change their mind about LeBron. I mean, it was, it was like he won five or six championships. So I feel it's the same way with Drew Brees. This man went, I mean, took a, a franchise that nobody really cared about and people hate on for some reason to the Super Bowl and won it. And all the reason why he ain't never won MVP is because the media don't like New Orleans. Sorry, that's facts. The media does not like New Orleans. The media does not like the Saints being successful. I mean, they just don't. Anytime, anytime the Cowboys or, or, or the Steelers win a game by a field goal or something like that, oh my goodness, the comeback, the greatness of this player and that player for the team. But when the Saints do it, they're like, oh, yeah, they 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 won by the skin of their teeth. Like, man, come on, man. Like, I understand. I understand what a market is and all that kind of stuff. But, man, they just be hating on the Saints for no freaking reason. Like, for real. Like, don't get mad. You know what I'm saying? That, that the Saints be busting up teams that people love. And they're going to continue to do it. Because, to me, like – Man, it's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. I understand that Drew Brees is going to retire, and hopefully the Saints can get somebody that that is a quality quarterback that can come in and, you know, make some plays and stuff like that. But if you're a Saints fan, man, you got to be real optimistic about the future because they got some good players. Um, At least we don't have to watch our Super Bowl win on VHS. <laughs> For real, Ryan. I know a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans. They got to do that. And um, the Atlanta. Fe oh, oh yeah, my bad. Atlanta. Y'all never won a Super Bowl, right? <laughs> ah man. Ah, I gotta troll those uh Falcon fans, man, who always be hiding in the comments somewhere, man. I, I understand. Like, I, I look Falcon fans. I understand. Like, you you gotta go to other places to find teams that actually matter. I mean, I understand that, Atlanta, man. Look, I mean, I know it can't feel good, man. You know, forever going to be remembered for the team that gave up a 25-point lead, had the Super Bowl trophy in their hands, and just dropped it. I mean, I can understand that, Atlanta. You know, I mean, we'll never forget that. Y'all can talk about, oh, yeah, y'all whining, y'all boo-hooing about the NFC Championship game. Y'all had a chance to win. 
No, Atlanta, y'all had a chance to win. That was a true chance, okay? That that was a true chance. Don't don't ever forget this. Like, honestly, how can Atlanta Falcon fan talk about anybody? I'm, I'm serious. How can Atlanta Falcon fan talk about anybody? It is it is is baffling to me. How how can they can talk about anybody? Any team. I mean, do people realize that they got people that don't even like football watch the Super Bowl? You had one of the highest rated Super Bowls of all time. And the whole world saw you blow it. Okay? Maybe if, you know, like the Saints, you know, they, they got screwed and they got robbed, but the whole world didn't see it. I'm talking about people in Brazil. They speak in Brazilian, you know what I'm saying? Like Spanish, you know, Mexican people speaking Spanish, you know what I'm saying? They they saying it in their language. They blew it. They blew it. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you Portuguese. They 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 saying you blew it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't understand. Y'all just don't understand, man. Like, how the hell can y'all talk about anybody, man? Like, people are speaking in different languages talking about how y'all blew it. Not just in America. <laughs> Oh, man. Like, for real, man. Falcon fans, man, y'all need to go sit down somewhere, man. Y'all, look, y'all need to win a Super Bowl or, or win a game that actually matter before y'all say anything about anybody. For real. I'll never forget that. Y'all y'all blew a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl. Okay? Super Bowl. All right? that That's the biggest game. That's what, that's what this young kid that's out, you know what I'm saying, playing park ball right now aspires to do to win a Super Bowl. Okay? With the dream and the gleam in his eye to possibly host, hoist that Lombardi trophy and just look at it and, and, and have tears in his eyes. That's what he aspires to do. And that's something that y'all never done, Atlanta. Y'all never done it, man. And when y'all come on pages like the State of the Saints podcast and talk noise, it just make you look even more pathetic, man. And it make me feel bad for you, man. It make, you, it make me feel bad for you. I mean, y'all, y'all stay taking L's. I mean, worst why Super Bowl was in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Y'all hosted the Super Bowl. It was the worst why Super Bowl. Nobody wanted to see it. I mean, y'all blew a 25 point lead. I mean, man, then y'all tried to pull a billboard up in Louisiana, and nobody wanted to take y'all money. Like y'all stay taking L's. Like they stay taking L's, and then y'all have not beat the Saints in almost two years. But you know what they're going to say? The overall record between teams, we lead. But then they'll turn around and talk about, when Saints fans talk about how they blew the uh, the Super Bowl. But that was in the past. But y'all bring up the past to talk about overall records. And I, I don't get it, Atlanta, man. Do better. Just do better. All right? Just, just do better. But um, Michael Thomas' contract, um, what y'all think? Y'all got the floor right now. Should should they pay Michael Thomas? And another thing, um, I, I, I seen somebody talking about Taysom Hill um, being the next quarterback of the Saints. I don't believe that. I'm sorry. I, I Man, I'm trying to see what people see in Taysom Hill as a quarterback. I, I'm trying to see it. I'm trying to see what y'all see in Taysom Hill. Nothing about Taysom Hill <clears throat> tells me he's the future of the Saints. Now, it tells me he has a future job with the Saints as being a Swiss Army knife, but I, I just don't see it. I don't see what people see in Taysom Hill. Like, I understand, like, everybody looking at how Teddy Bridgewater played in Week 17, but he played with three guys that were on the offensive line that the Saints signed that week. I, I mean, man, these guys had absolutely no chemistry whatsoever. And they go out there and they're, they're playing together and there's, they're, you expect them to protect Teddy Bridgewater. You know, like, I don't know, man. Like, for real. Like, I understand, like, you know, Teddy Bridgewater ain't playing years and, you know, maybe he was a little nervous. I will say that, but he's better than Taysom Hill. I'm sorry. He is better than Taysom Hill. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Like, do you think that Taysom Hill is better than Teddy Bridgewater? Why? I I, I leave that up to you. I I look at the comments, but to me, I don't see it, man. I don't think that Taysom Hill is better. Like Taysom Hill, 
Um, he's a decent quarterback. Like, I've been watching Taysom. Like, this ain't nothing new. Like, I watched Taysom Hill when he was at BYU. Now, he was good. I mean, I seen him play in a, in a big game against Oklahoma. He put up some big numbers, man. I just think people just like. Like, Taysom Hill has that 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 Tim Tebow type um, aura about him. You know, like, how everybody just loved Tim Tebow. You know, they not not so much his game, but just his energy and what he brings to the team. Like he was that spark, and everybody everybody loved him for that. Everybody loved him for his passion. Everybody loved him, you know, for what he brought to the team. He made players that played with him want to run through a wall. And um, you know, I think that's the same thing with Taysom Hill. Like you know, when the Saints are down. And all of a sudden, Sean Payton calls the the number of Taysom Hill, and he'll, you know, he'll break a tackle or two and get a first down, and he'll get up, man, get the crowd hyped like this, you know what I'm saying? And everybody just go crazy, and then the team feeds off it. I'm like, I'm all for that. You need people like that on your team. Yeah, yeah, Lionel. Like, uh, yeah, a hype man. That, that's what he is. Like, he's a hype man. <clears throat> he's a, he's an exciting guy to watch because – I mean, you look at him, man. We need about six two, about two thirty. You know what I'm saying? Like he built like a like a running back or a linebacker, a, a small linebacker. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he he has an okay arm. You know, women think he good looking. Maybe some guys think he good looking. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's, but I mean, good looks and and and, and big muscles not gonna get the job done. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not. You know what I'm saying? You 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 looking swole cock diesel, you know what I'm saying, out here, but you throwing full interception. You know what I'm saying? You just a swole dude that throw picks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like <laughs> I just don't see it, man. But I do see something in Teddy Bridgewater, man. I, I see I see a lot of things in Teddy Bridgewater. I, I see a lot of promise in Teddy, man. Like, man, it, it's a reason the Saints signed him back. It, it, it's a reason why the Saints signed him back, man. Like, it, it, man. I understand people saw week 17 once again, but Teddy Bridgewater is something special. When it like I, I feel like when this man gets fully healthy and he really gets the a chance to really show what he has, a lot of people in the Who That Nation gonna say, Man, man, this, this dude here the truth. Because Teddy Bridgewater was supposed to be the first pick overall. He was supposed to be, man, but he had a bad pro day. And the reason why is because Teddy Bridgewater, since he was in high school, always threw with a glove. And his agent, who he fired and he needed to, told him, well, maybe scouts are going to think it's weird that you're throwing with a glove. So for the first time since ever, he went to his pro day without a glove on and he stunk it up. He stunk it up. And then all of a sudden, his stock just went down. And that, that's why he went from being the first pick overall to the 32nd pick falling to the Minnesota Vikings. And the Minnesota Vikings should have thought, um, th thank they lucky stars that he came through. And I think the Saints, uh, you know, are lucky to have a guy like this, man. Like, this dude have a lot of promise, man. And, and what are you, like, 27, 28 years old? Like, come on, man. Like, I mean, pff, ain't plenty of time. Like, plen like, how old was Drew Brees when he got signed by the Saints? He was 27. You know what I'm saying? Same as Teddy Bridgewater. Now, I'm not saying that Teddy Bridgewater is, is Drew Brees, but, I mean, Drew Brees didn't start off setting the world on fire. Drew Brees was a, a suitable quarterback at best for the Chargers. Like, go back and take a look at it. I mean, go look back and look at his numbers. There's a reason why they, they thought they needed to go get Phillip Rivers. Now, we, hindsight is 2020, and, like, we can look now and see that the Chargers – Made a mistake, and it was a blessing to us in the Who That Nation, but Drew Brees wasn't always Drew Brees. It, it took time. Um, It took the right scheme. It, it took the right offense. It took the right circumstance in order for Drew Brees to be who he is. And maybe it's the same thing for Teddy B. And Teddy B going to be the truth, man. I'm telling you. Like, I know a lot of people were ranting and raving. Um, Drew Brees, uh, he missed a couple of days of practice because him and his wife was – in the middle of a lawsuit for the jeweler. I, I, I don't know if y'all heard about that, but the jeweler sold him some fake diamonds. And um, Drew Brees had to go to court. And um, he got, what, $6.1 million in a settlement? But in the meantime, Teddy Bridgewater was taking uh, snaps with the first team. 
And everybody was going crazy about how the ball was looking. You know, a lot of zip on the ball. He was putting the ball where it needed to be. Man, that's the kind of stuff you want to hear. Like, that's what you want to hear about, you know, from, you know, a, a Teddy Bridgewater, a guy that's supposed to be Drew Brees' successor. And make no mistake about it, he is going to be Drew Brees' successor. And that is one of the main reasons why I feel like, well, this is one of the main reasons I feel like Drew Brees, is, um, this is going to be his last year. Because Teddy Bridgewater had an opportunity to go to the Miami Dolphins and be the starting quarterback before they decide to go and trade for Josh Rosen. He was supposed to be the the next quarterback and he had opportunity to, but he decided to not take that. Now think about this. Teddy Bridgewater had opportunity to be the starting quarterback for his hometown team. Okay? The Miami Dolphins. Just just imagine you're being a quarterback, you get drafted and all of a sudden you have opportunity to be the next quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. You'll be like, man, where do I sign? This man had opportunity to go home and play in front of his family and his friends and, and turn around a franchise that he watched growing up. But he decided to leave and stay in New Orleans and, and, and back up Drew Brees. There got to be a reason for that. There, there's got to be a reason for that. This man turned down money and a starting opportunity to be a backup for the New Orleans Saints. I mean, and, and then, you know, he was kind of skeptical because he felt that, uh, you know, Sean Payton was interested in a Dallas Cowboy job, which that ended up being false. But I'm telling you, man, like, he, he he's he's up next, man. And I hope y'all ready, you know. Uh, Man, shouts out to Emmanuel, man. What's going on? This, actual, this is my real brother right here. This support right here. This love. And I see his wife on there, man. I love y'all, man. It says, as somebody who watched uh, Teddy B in college, that boy got game in the same system with quality reps. He should do well. I, I agree with you, E. I, I do. I, I agree with you 100% with that. And, uh, you know, like I said, man, you just got to stay tuned. Like, I, I mean, it, it'll, it'll be great to have a quarterback that, that understands um, the league. Because when you're dealing with young quarterbacks, you got to, you got to, um, make sure that he's up to speed. He has to understand the playbook. He has to understand the speed of the game. And that takes time. But when you get a, a quarterback that actually understands the speed and understands, you know, the playbook and stuff like that, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a blessing. You can go out there and you can actually go get other things that team need. But the first thing teams start doing when they get rookie quarterbacks is try to build up their defense because they realize that the quarterback going to make a lot of mistakes. They they realize that. I mean, everybody can't be Patrick Mahomes, you know. And even with that, Patrick Mahomes, you know, he he sat on the bench and watched Alex Smith for sixteen games, well, fifteen games, and he started in week seventeen. So, you know, it took some time, man. He had to understand a playbook, and now we see who Patrick Mahomes really is. So it takes some time, man. Yeah, um, yeah, Angela, he has to learn from Drew Brees, and that's that's a good person to learn from, right? <laughs> Shoot, uh, you, can you think of anybody better than to learn from than Drew Brees? Drew Brees is like a Drew Brees is like a, a coach on the field, man. You know, and, and man, Drew Brees is is really really smart. Like I, I don't think people understand that. Like I remember Drew Brees at Purdue. I think Drew Brees graduated with a four point oh uh, grade point average. I don't know if y'all remember this, but back in the day, like when they used to have college football games on, they I, they kind of still do it now. But they would show the player, his stats, and his GPA. And I always was like, man, Drew Brees has a 4.0 grade point average. <laughs> but that shows you right there, man. He like he's really smart, man. He's really good at what he does. Um, you know, I mean, he's great in the community. He's the best thing that could possibly happen to New Orleans, you know. Um, being as humble as he is, being as grounded and uh, family oriented that that he is, and he wants to win, man. He, he like he came in with a chip on his shoulder, and he came in with something to prove. And um, I think the stars were just aligned, man. He had something to prove by you know coming back, and a lot of people wrote him off, um, thought that he'd never play football ever again because of his rotator cuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, it, it was. It was bad, man. He, he he talked about how he was in a dark place in his life, and he didn't know if he was going to be able to come back for it. But after surgery, shouts out to James Andrews, um, graduated from LSU. 
You know, I don't know if they made a deal or whatever. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy though? Like James Andrews, you know, he he graduated from LSU, and he was like, okay, I'm gonna fix your shoulder. But I heard you had a, a a chance to go to Miami and New Orleans. Now, if I get you right, I need you to go down to New Orleans. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy, though, if he had a conversation and a reason, the real reason why he came to New Orleans was because of Dr. James Andrews? <laughs> that'd be crazy, right? Now that'd, be a, now, that'd be a story to tell, right? Like, something like down the line, Drew Brees retired and stuff like that. would be like, the real reason I came because James Andrews, you know, he really helped me. And, you know, that'd be something, man. That'd, that'd be some, um, man, that, that'd be something to read in a book, right? <clears throat> but long story short, uh, Drew Brees... Um, incredible quarterback, and um, you know it is it, it's, it's great to watch him, man. But, huh, man, I say this, but you know all things must come to an end. Like everybody, you can't play forever, and um, you know I I just think that is is winding down on him. I, I really do. I really think I really think in my heart that if Drew Brees would have won the Super Bowl, he would have retired. I mean, Drew Brees has three young sons that's playing football. Right now, he coaches the team, and I'm pretty sure he wants to spend a lot more time with his family and, you know, coach his sons and, and watch them grow up and all that kind of stuff. You know, um, it's kind of like with Archie Manning. You know, like Archie Manning, he played all those years, and, um, you know, Peyton Manning and Eli, I don't even think they really too much remember him playing, you know. But he was he played long enough, and then he retired, and he was able to – you know, watch them, you know, rise through the ranks, play at uh, Newman and, and um, Peyton Manning go to Tennessee and Eli go to Ole Miss and Cooper, you know, play at Newman and, you know, watch his three sons. I'm pretty sure Drew Brees wants to do the same thing, you know. And, uh, you know, I can't blame him, man. Like, family comes first. Like, we love Drew Brees. We love him. But, you know, if it comes down to it, man, you want to you pick your family first. And I'm pretty sure it's pretty cool for his sons, and I'm, it's pretty cool for him to be able to watch his sons run through the facility and and mess, you know, and play around with with players and stuff like that. But I bet you it's going to be even more cool to actually be sitting on the ble sitting in the bleachers, sitting in the stands, watching his sons play sports, you know. So and, and he has the opportunity to do that, and he he's uh, made enough money where he can actually take care of his family you know, for the rest of his life. So that's the only thing that you can ask for. But uh, I would like to hear from you guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, thank you for uh, looking at this live video. Uh, once again, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, go to youtube.com, search The State of the Saints Podcast. And also, um, all, all uh, previous episodes, if you haven't seen any of the podcast episodes, they're available on Facebook. Uh, you know, just go ahead, check out some of the videos and um, feel free to share some of them as well. Um, on YouTube, I am think I'm, about, I'm like almost a few subscribers away from 2,000 subscribers. And um, this Facebook page is taking on a life of its own. We're almost at 6,000 followers, man. That's crazy. Like, and that, that's just so crazy. And, and once again, man, I'm just extremely humbled. At the end of the day, I'm just a guy who grew up in New Orleans, man. Grew up in the Ninth Ward. Grew up rooting for the Saints. Um, my grandmother, uh, shouts out to Miss Maxine Jones, um, one of the biggest Saints fans that you ever going to see. Um, you know, she made me fall in love with the team, and uh, I'm just a guy that just loved my team and just like talking about them, man. And I, I appreciate anybody. Like I, I don't care. I know I joke around. You know, talk about Atlanta Falcon fan, like anybody. Like if you're a, a fan of the Falcons, you're a fan of the Buccaneers, the the Panthers. You know what I'm saying? Like anybody that comes and see what I'm talking about, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, we all want our teams to be successful. I mean, we all want our teams to be successful. I mean, it's fun for us to talk about you know, each other and stuff like that, you know, like talk about Falcon fans and Falcon fans talk about us, and Carolina Panthers, you know, it's the NFC South, it's a rival, but at the end of the day, we all want what's best and then we want our team to be hoisting that Lombardi trophy at the end of the year. So anybody, anybody, man, that, that sees these videos and share these videos and like these videos, man, I'm, I'm grateful for that, okay, because 
I love doing it. And I love giving you news on the New Orleans Saints. And I love to see your feedback. And, you know, I really do appreciate that. But signing off, until next time, all I have to say is, who that?